You know that old adage is true. Once you go past 60 hertz, you never want to go back. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the EX3501R from BenQ. First off, the spec list on this thing is impressive to say the least. It's a 35 inch 3440 by 1440 VA type monitor with a 100 hertz refresh rate and a four millisecond response time. Support for every monitor input is included with DisplayPort 1.2, a pair of HDMI 2.0s and USB Type-C. There's an 1800R curve to the panel, HDR and FreeSync support. So on paper, this monitor seems to have just a little bit of everything, but how well does it work in practice and is it right for you? Out of the box, you get a quick start guide, a mini display to display port, HDMI 2.0 and a USB Type-C, but more on the HDMI cable in just a second. There's the display stand itself and a power brick that's not too egregiously large, but not small enough to ignore either. Getting the monitor set up on my desk and the first thing I noticed, besides how absolutely beautiful the panel was, was actually the lack of a built-in VESA mount around the rear. Now, as someone who uses nothing but wall and clamp mounts here in my office, that's a feature I pretty much expect nowadays out of monitors. Now, BenQ did at one time offer a VESA adapter kit for the EX3501, but it's no longer available for sale or even listed on their website. And I wasn't even able to track it down on the usual suspects, be it Amazon, Newegg, or even eBay. I was able to track down an STL file from the community so I could 3D print one for myself in theory, but I'm not sure I would trust this 23 pound monitor to a 3D print. Once my monitor mounting hopes were pretty thoroughly dashed, I went about actually reviewing the monitor because, well, that's what it is. Now in my studio here, I have both an LG UD4379 and a much older HP ZR2740W, and they have 350 and 380 nit brightness respectively. Now the BenQ is only rated at 300 nit, but in pretty much every single comparative test that I ran, this is the brighter screen. And I'm kind of scratching my head at that. Now I have no real accurate way to test screen brightness. So I am starting out with kind of a subjective comparison here but this was the brighter screen every single time whenever I put the same media on all three panels, leaving me to wonder if BenQ just has a typo in their spec sheet, as 400 nit brightness is pretty much expected for HDR supported panels, and this does have HDR in it. So BenQ, can you lend some clarification there? Is this a 400 nit screen or am I just crazy? DisplayPort 1.2 and USB-C will drive 1440p panels at up to 100 hertz with no problem at all. However, only HDMI 2.0 supports HDR at those resolutions and refresh rates, which brings me to not really a negative, but something that I experienced with this monitor. The HDMI cable included in the box did not allow me to turn on HDR. It was only when I swapped out to another HDMI 2.0 cable that I knew was a 2.0 that I was able to check the HDR box inside of Windows. This could have been an isolated issue to either my monitor or my cable, so I'm not taking any points away there, but something to keep in mind and BenQ, did you really give me an HDMI 1.4? I, I don't think that you did. I think I might've just gotten unlucky. Now diving into gaming as that's pretty much what this panel was designed for. And the thing that really pops out to me is not the 100 Hertz refresh rate or the perfect FreeSync implementation, which I will get into next, but the black levels on this panel are phenomenal. Even comparing this next to a pair of IPS panels sitting right next to it, I would take the black levels on the BenQ all day long. That's not speaking to color accuracy or any kind of content creation work, but as a gaming monitor, even in standard dynamic range, the BenQ seemed to have brighter brights, deeper blacks, and in general, more vivid color than either of my other two daily drivers. And that is not to take away anything from the buttery smooth 100 Hertz or the aforementioned adaptive sync through FreeSync. With FreeSync enabled, I didn't notice a single instance of screen tearing in any of my gameplay. And I've been using this panel off and on for about a month now. Every single game has been absolutely flawless. Driving the screen from a Vega 64 makes a pretty killer combination. And thanks to the cryptocurrency boom finally being behind us, this combo is not only affordable, it actually is starting to make a little bit of sense. I picked up the Vega 64 just before Thanksgiving for $399, bringing the total cost of my GPU and monitor to $1,200. Now that's expensive, don't get me wrong, but looking at an equivalent G-Sync panel at the $200 premium that they seem to run, and then purchasing a GTX 1080 or RTX 2070 at five to $600 to drive it at over 100 hertz, and well, you can see there's quite a bit of value at going with Team Red here. The on-screen menu, while intuitive enough, I will say does feel a little bit dated and I am being a little bit nitpicky here. More frequently than I'd like to admit, I wound up pressing the wrong button, as unless you're looking straight on at the panel, your fingers can't get a little bit lost at the seven buttons that are underneath this thing. 
Rather than select and back options, the menu displayed just left and right arrows all the time, regardless of whether or not you were changing menus or actually changing a setting inside of the menu. There could definitely be a little bit better way to navigate this system. So what else do I like about this monitor? Well, the bezel is amazingly thin, down to about a quarter inch all the way around, so it makes for an almost borderless viewing experience. The monitor stand does its job okay. There's not a whole lot of adjustability as there's no height or pivot adjustment to this, meaning that you might be reaching for some old college textbooks to get this up to a comfortable height. Notice how much lower it is than my eye level here. Now, you do get about 15 to 20 degrees of tilt support, which is nice, and the stand itself is plenty sturdy, meaning the monitor isn't going to wiggle or wobble on top of your desk. However, I might also remind you that it's on top of my desk because there is no built-in VESA mount support. The EX3501R is my first foray into HDR, and I finally understand the possibilities when it comes to gaming. I also get now why everyone is griping about HDR support inside of Windows and some games. To start, enabling HDR in Windows was nearly unusable as it dimmed the entire screen by more than half, turned my cursor gray, and made the refresh rate feel somewhere around 45 hertz rather than the 100 it was reporting. There are also only a handful of games that natively supported it well. So I fired up Hellblade, the one game that I own that is HDR capable. It's stunning, it's absolutely stunning. The problem is there's nothing I can really show you on camera to explain the difference between standard and HDR, unless you own an HDR monitor, in which case you probably already know. But there's a noticeable improvement when it's enabled and properly working. <coughs> Windows. There's just a level of definition in the color and the saturation and the contrast in objects in the world, all without feeling like the highlights are bleached out or the shadows are just blobs of gray and black. Without any metrics or equipment to measure what HDR is and isn't, the visual difference with an on certainly tells me that this monitor is doing its job well. Again, I'm not speaking to color accuracy here, I'm speaking to level of definition on the display. And my eyes, awesome. <laughs> so who is this monitor for? Well, I focus this review primarily on gaming because to me, that is the target market here. At $799, the EX3501R is a commitment to buy. And buying the screen likely means you either already have a GPU to drive it, or you have no problems picking one up at retail. At the time of writing, the cheapest G-Sync panel at 35 inch and 3440 by 1440 was the AOC AG352UCG6 at $860. And it doesn't include USB-C or HDR support. Barring that, there really aren't any options under $1,000. If you're looking to get into higher than 60 FPS gaming at 1440p ultra wide and you have or are planning to buy a Vega 56 or 64 to take advantage of FreeSync, then the BenQ EX3501R is a home run. It's just hit to the first row sometime in the second inning. Sure, it's not game ending, it's not flashy, and you'd be a little bit more excited if they added VESA support and a little bit better on-screen display navigation. But it's about the best outcome that you can hope to see at that point in time. And at $799, it is plenty competitive given the broad feature set, sturdy build construction, and superb performance in gaming. But what do you guys think? Is the EX3501R from BenQ worth it to you? Let me know down in the comments below. And 3D printer guys, don't forget to let me know how wrong I am for not trusting my $800 monitor to a 3D print. I'm sure you guys already have the comment typed out. If you are interested in picking up the BenQ EX3501R or anything else that you've seen on this channel, make sure to follow the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. It doesn't cost you a thing and I do get a little bit of a commission from Amazon for that and it really does help keep the lights on around here. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Also make sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans or to get behind the scenes looks at future projects. Thank you guys so much for watching this one and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.